update on Elon Local News. The founding dean of the School of Communications announces today he's stepping down. We spoke to him about his plans for the future. And the Elon community remembers Junior Breslin Wiley. We talked to his friends and classmates. All that and more. Elon Local News starts right now. Live from the Jane and Brian Williams studio at Elon University School of Communications, you are watching Elon Local News. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Rachel Ellis. And I'm Emily Harrison. School of Communications Dean Paul Parsons announced today he is stepping down. He has been with the university for 17 years since the founding of the school. Armai Eaglin spoke to Parsons today about his decision. After 17 years of service in the role, Dean Paul Parsons says now is the right time for him to step down. This was a very good time to make this transition. We had moved into our new facilities and we were hosting our national accreditation visit this fall. And, and a new dean will get to start next year with the facilities completed, with accreditation completed. It's just a good transition time. Parsons has overseen multiple changes within the communications school including his longest accomplishment, expanding the school. It's renovating two buildings. It was building two new buildings. It was almost tripling the amount of space available for our students. That has been uh, really special to me. Professor Gibson says Parson has been instrumental for the progress the school has made. He's been incredible at bringing in a diverse faculty to our school. He has been incredible in helping to raise scholarships and all sorts of things. Parson says he hopes to leave behind a legacy of positive mentorship and meaningful interactions. I think one of the special things we have going in this school is a very close relationship of students with faculty and staff. That's probably advice number one I will give to the new dean. After taking sabbatical, Parsons will return as a professor. This is something Gibson thinks is a good fit. He loved teaching. He was an outstanding teacher before he became a dean. It's a decision to return to his true passion. But I love being in a classroom. I love teaching. Even though it involves grading papers and all of that, I still love it. Maya Eaglin, Elon Local News. According to Provost Stephen House, a national search will soon begin to find a new dean who will start on June 1st, 2018. Tonight, the Elon community is in mourning after junior Breslin Wiley died over the weekend. Wiley was found in his off-campus home in the town of Elon on Saturday morning. And our Paula Blanc spoke to friends and peers of Wiley's who attended a gathering of friends last night in the Newman Lumen Pavilion. It was a quiet night in the academic pavilion, except around the Newman Lumen building, where friends, family, and teammates gathered to grieve the death of Elon Jr. Breslin Wiley. <laughs> the memory said everyone was told that he was crazy, like he always had a large smile on his face. He always was there to set the mood and make sure everyone was having fun. Senior Ali Brainard was one of many Elon students to attend the gathering of friends. We're all in a, this place and we're all grieving together, but to be able to remember Breslin as such a powerful, strong, shining light, I think was really, really essential last night. University chaplain Jan Fuller organized the gathering. And what I heard tonight was a kind of disbelief, a kind of shock, which is very, very normal. Um, and as this, and as the reality of that sets in, we begin to feel that we miss him in very particular, poignant ways. Fuller says of the hundreds that turned out to the event, it was Wiley's parents who felt the Elon community the most. They were so grateful to have been here and to have heard what the the friends shared the laughter, the joy, it meant so much to them to know that he had made such a difference. While the pain remains fresh for many, Fuller says the future holds fond memories of who Wiley was. I think that we're going to get through this really heartbroken moment and we're going to move on to all of the, all of the thousands of memories that make us laugh um, and that bring a smile and that really warm our hearts. Paula Blanc, Elon, Local News. The town of Elon Police Department told Elon News Network Wiley's death is being investigated as an incident of self-harm. After Wiley's death, Elon chapter of Zeta Tau Alpha canceled their annual Think Pink event on Sunday. Wiley's mother, Georgia Wiley, is a breast cancer survivor and was scheduled to be the guest speaker at the event. 
To honor Wiley, the sorority gave away the balloons for the cancel event to members of the club baseball team to share their condolences. And we are now joined by a close friend of it, members of the club baseball team and a contributor for ENN, Miles Garrett. Miles, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, so, you know, with Elon being such a tight knit community, it's extremely likely that um, someone um, nearby was affected by Breslin's death. How are your, and I know you are very good friends with um, some of his teammates. How are they doing right now? Absolutely, you know, I mean, naturally they're grieving right now. This is a very tough time for the Elon community and specifically the club baseball players. You know, they're, I know them very well. Um, they're probably one of the closest, you know, groups of, you know, clubs, you know, in general on this campus, you know, so you have fraternities, you have sororities, you have the clubs as well. But club baseball is one of those really tight knit communities. You know, after the service yesterday, they had a specific gathering for the club baseball players upstairs in Newman Lumen, and it's very emotional, very trying times, um, but uh, the reason why they're so close, they'll get through it. Like you mentioned, there was the gathering of friends yesterday. Do you think that helped people of the community? Absolutely. Um, I think, you know, even some of his closest friends were surprised, <clears throat> were surprised to see uh, how many people showed up. Um, just that you could really just tell the impact that Breslin had on this community, the Elon community, and you know more than just club baseball, but the entire school. Um, you know, Newman Lumen was filled to capacity. I think it really helped for people to really express themselves, tell a story or two about Breslin. You know, maybe get a couple laughs in there, um, share a funny story about him, and I think it was very helpful for uh, for some people, for some students here. And moving forward, what can the Elon community, what can people do to help his close friends? You know, for the time being, I think a lot of them need some space at the moment. Um, I think, you know, there's, there's counseling services here, um, but for his close friends and the people who knew him the most, specifically those club baseball guys, that's who he lived with, um, I'd say all you got to do is pray, keep them in your thoughts, um, tell them, be there for them, you know, if they need, a, if they need someone to talk to, if they need to you know, just express themselves, express how they're feeling, because it may not hit them tomorrow, may not hit them, you know, next week, it may hit them in the next few months, you know, it's people express themselves and handle things in different ways, so the most you can do for now is just be there for them and uh, let them have their space a little bit. Well, thank you for being here, Miles, we really Absolutely. appreciate it. Um, and if you or someone you know would like to talk to someone about Wiley's death, there are several on-campus resources. You can make an appointment with counseling services at 336-278-7280 during regular hours, which are Monday to Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you need to speak to someone after hours, you can call 336-278-5555. We'll be right back. You're watching Elon Local News. Along with homecoming, another celebrated Elon tradition is commencement. University President Leo Lambert talked about changes to the ceremony in his address to faculty and staff earlier this year. Some new ones were announced today in an email from the Executive Director of Cultural and Special Programs for Elon. Starting in 2019, commencement will break down into two different ceremonies. One will be outdoors on Scott Plaza in front of Alamance, where we'll see the usual processional of students and commencement speakers. It'll be at 8.45 a.m. for all students, families, and guests. Then there will be two separate diploma awarding ceremonies, one at 11.30 a.m. for Elon College, the College of Arts and Sciences, and the School of Education. The Martha and Spencer Love School of Business and School of Communications will award diplomas in a 3 p.m. ceremony, and both ceremonies will be in the Shar Center, lasting about two hours. And each graduate will be issued six tickets for family and guests. And Safe Rides is the student-run ride program that relies on volunteers to give students a safe ride home on the weekends. It operates Thursday through Saturday nights. But because of lack of volunteer interest, some nights have been getting canceled. Caroline Hartshorn has more on initiatives the organization is taking to attract volunteers. Safe Rides, how can I help you? Since 1993, Safe Rides has been transporting students from point A Thank you. to point B. And Director Molly Creedon sees the benefits of students helping students. It's a service that people can really trust because e-rides, while it's also free and available, it's run by the campus police. I think when you get into a Safe Rides with a fellow student, you know you're in a safe environment. No one's going to be judging you. Entirely student-run, Safe Rides depends on volunteers to make every night a success. This means right, needing at way. least 20 students to volunteer each night, a number they often struggle to hit, affecting more than just the students. We're actually part of the university safety plan and policy, so when we don't run, there is a big 
consequence of the university, we have to go through certain channels to make sure that we're notifying the right people. It goes to Dr. Dooley, goes to Dr. Lambert. Everyone needs to know just because something happens. It was a lack of our volunteering that night. Trying to meet this goal of 60 students per weekend has encouraged the Safe Rides team to get creative on social media and hold events to promote safe driving and get more volunteers. A new VIP status initiative offers people who volunteer three or more times to jump to the top of the ride waiting list once a semester. Safe Rides Captain Nick Everidge says he expects to see a change in the spring. I think that for sure in the spring semester we'll see a tick up in uh, volunteers, especially from first year students. Um, and a lot of seniors volunteer spring semester or their senior year because, you know, maybe they've never done Safe Rides or they want to do it again with their friends before they graduate. Everidge wants volunteering for Safe Rides to become a part of the Elon experience. It's part of that bucket list, um, you know, jump in the fountain, steal the brick, volunteer with Safe Rides. Caroline Hartshorn, Elon Local News. And Creedon told us Halloween weekend is usually one of the busiest weekends of the year. And while Safe Rides normally struggles to find volunteers, this past weekend they successfully ran all three nights and got 515 people home safely. You may have noticed rubber ducks if you are walking around Mosley today. That's because Family of Youth Services of Alamance County has teamed up with Elon volunteers. They say their eye-catching display is meant to raise awareness and donations. All day today, students could donate $3 towards Family of Youth Services and float their own duck in the fountain for others to see. Elon senior Kendall Kopchick works with Family of Youth Services and says relationship abuse is something college students should be looking out for. No one deserves to feel unsafe or unhappy in a relationship and you know we're all people we all need to be treated with dignity and we all deserve to have control over our own lives um, and I think it's really upsetting that people don't realize that. If you or anyone you know is struggling with relationship abuse you can call Elon's on-campus service safe line 24-7 at 336-278-3333 or schedule an appointment with counseling services. Brian Wright is outside on Citrone Plaza with more. Brian. Thanks, Emily and Rachel. A northeast coastal storm brought 80 mile per hour winds and left over 1 million without power. With Massachusetts being the second most represented state at Elon, a lot of students are feeling the effect at home. Here behind me, as you can see, we are not seeing the effects of the storm here at Elon. The sun is setting behind a clear sky and there's a cool, brisk temperature in the air. Looking ahead at our Phoenix five day forecast, it looks like things are going to warm up a little bit. Looking at tomorrow, there's going to be sunny skies with a high of 67 and a low of 53 with temperatures dropping into the for Halloween. Looking at Wednesday, we have partly cloudy skies with a high of 68 and a low of 48. Thursday, we have a cloudy start to the day but clearing up later with a high of 73 and a low of 51. Friday, we have sunny skies with clouds coming later in the day with a high of 77 and a low of 53. Saturday for Elon's homecoming, we're looking at showers with the possibility of thunder and those showers returning later in the day for the John Bellion concert with a high of 71 and a low of 53. With your Phoenix five day forecast, I'm Brian Ray. Emily and Rachel, back to you. Thank you, Brian. And let's take a look at what's happening around Elon this week. On Wednesday, Tibetan Tibetan Buddhist monks will construct a sand mandala for healing and peace. The opening ceremony is Wednesday at 9 a.m. in the sacred space, and members of the community are encouraged to stop by to see the progress. Elon's production of Hello Dolly will run again this week. The show will run in McCrary Theater from Thursday to Saturday. For show times and tickets, visit the Center of the Arts box office. The show is free with an Elon ID. Finally, homecoming weekend starts Friday. The Phoenix will be playing Towson Saturday at 2 p.m. in Rhodes Stadium. After the game, head over to Colonnade's parking lot. John Bellion will be the headliner for this year's free concert at 8 p.m. And also happening this week, events led by the Student Government Association in preparation of homecoming. On Wednesday, head to Tap House for homecoming trivia night. There will be free food and a cash bar for those over 21. And trivia night is from 7 to 9 p.m. on Wednesday. On Thursday, the first Battle of the Bands. Celebrity judges at the competition include President Leo Lambert, Dr. Smith Jackson, and music lecturer Clay Stevenson. The battle begins on Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. at Fat Frog. And on Friday, the weekend kicks off with a homecoming banner parade. The parade will begin in Global at 5 p.m. and will end on Haggard Avenue. For more on homecoming throughout the weekend, check out our website, elonnewsnetwork.com. And coming up, one Elon student is raising awareness about eating disorders on campus. 
I'm Ellie Whittington and I'll have the latest in sports after the break. You're watching Elon Local News. University President Leo Lambert is using his last four months as president to give current students all the advice he can. Lambert spoke at Elon's chapter of the fraternity Delta Upsilon on Friday and encouraged members of the fraternity to be leaders with integrity and leave Elon better than they found it. On his own legacy, Lambert says he hopes to be remembered at Elon for promoting a strong sense of community on campus. I hope it will be as somebody that tried to preserve Elon's uh, culture and values as a very student-centered university uh, where young people can come and thrive and, and be transformed and, and find significant mentors and, their, uh, and, and to find their place in the world. President Lambert will be taking a sabbatical after Dr. Connie Book takes office in March 2018. One Elon student is using her story to inspire others. Ali Dietz has more. Conversations about eating disorders can be difficult, but Elon senior Hannah Durbin is trying to change that through a new organization on campus called Project Heal. Durbin's own recovery process inspired her to start Elon's chapter. When she was a freshman, Durbin was struggling with an eating disorder. I couldn't handle taking care of myself, but also my mental health was so non-existent. I didn't even know what that meant. I was so trapped in these disordered thoughts that I couldn't think, I couldn't speak, I couldn't stay awake because I was so tired because I was so malnourished. She says while the healing process has been challenging, being involved in Project Teal has made a difference. Recovery is really up and down. But now being a senior and my, the lowest lows of my disorder were my freshman year of college. So coming four years later, being here now and leading this chapter is so empowering. Project Heal raises money through profit shares for the Project Heal National Treatment Fund, which provides grants for inpatient treatments. Sophomore Grace Donnellan, a Project Heal volunteer, says anyone can be affected by an eating disorder. Eating disorders affect almost one out of 10 males as well. And it's really invisible. There's no specific person that you have to look like in order to have an eating disorder. It's not being super, super stick thin. It's not being overweight. It's such a scale and it's a mindset. Durbin says teaching others about something she has gone through is what drives her. Being with a community who's either gone through it and has recovered or being in a community where people have not really had great experience with it and don't know too much about it and I can then educate them based on my own experience which is obviously super personal um, and knowing so many details about it and what I can do to help is amazing. Allie Dietz, Elon Local News. Anyone who wants to join the organization can apply to be a volunteer through their website www.projectheal.com. And homecoming is coming up this weekend. We have Ellie Winnington live in studio with everything Elon Athletics. Ellie, what's happening? Thanks, Emily. The Phoenix are on fire after another road win. Elon won at Villanova on Saturday, 19 to 14. The Phoenix are on a six game winning streak, continuing their undefeated run in the CAA conference. The offense led by quarterback Davis Cheek put the Phoenix back on top in the fourth quarter after being down 14 to 10 with less than five minutes left on the clock. Elon sophomore running back Deshaun McNair stepped up in place of starter Malcolm Summers, who suffered a hamstring injury against Albany. McNair ended the game with 90 rushing yards, improving the team's record to 7-1. The Phoenix faced Towson at Rose Stadium this homecoming weekend. The men's basketball team have high expectations coming into this season. CAA committee members predict Elon to finish third in the conference this year. The Phoenix will hit the court with their first game against Duke on November 10th in Durham. Thanks, Ellie. As football season winds down and basketball starts up, stay tuned for more coverage on elonnewsnetwork.com. And still to come, it's almost Halloween, and we're taking you inside Elon's American Horror Story. You're never too old for a haunted house. Halloween is tomorrow, and our Amanda Gibson found one part of campus getting into the Halloween spirit. We're here in Colony for the Haunted House American Harper story, and we're really excited to get scared and see what it's all about. So let's go. Oh, there's a clown at the end of the hallway. I already hate it so much.
and people like crawling around. I was pretty <laughs> scared. <laughs> Super spooky. Yeah, but it was really fun. Was good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice job, colonnades. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That looks like so much fun. I could feel her own like scaredness, but you know, I, I was like smiling. I'm but honestly not, so impressed with the, it, the quality. Like that happened on campus. No, that that was crazy. I could on it. I felt like I was there, but I couldn't help but smile because she did such a great job, and it, it it seemed like she was having fun. I hope it wasn't genuine. She was like very scared. Genuine screams. So genu genuine screams. They that's were we screaming a little bit. Just, yeah. just a touch. <laughs> And um, that's all the news we have for you tonight. Thank you for joining us. For all the news you need to know when we're not on air, check out our website, elonnewsnetwork.com. And be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Have a great night, Elon.